This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kelly Bresher of Mattapoisett, Massachusetts. Candide by Voltaire. Chapter 15 How Candide Killed the Brother of His Dear Cunegond. I shall have ever present to my memory the dreadful day on which I saw my father and mother killed and my sister ravished. When the Bulgarians retired, my dear sister could not be found. But my mother, my father, and myself, with two maidservants and three little boys, all of whom had been slain, were put in a hearse to be conveyed for interment to a chapel belonging to the Jesuits, within two leagues of our family seat. A Jesuit sprinkled us with some holy water. It was horribly salty. A few drops of it fell into my eyes. The father perceived that my eyelids stirred a little. He put his hand upon my heart and felt it beat. I received assistance, and at the end of three weeks I recovered. You know, my dear Candide, I was very pretty. But I grew much prettier, and the Reverend Father Deidre, superior of that house, conceived the tenderest friendship for me. He gave me the habit of the order. Some years after, I was sent to Rome. The general needed new levies of young German Jesuits. The sovereigns of Paraguay admit as few Spanish Jesuits as possible. They prefer those of other nations as being more subordinate to their commands. I was judged fit by the Reverend Father General to go and work in this vineyard. We set out, a Pole, a Tyrolese, and myself. Upon my arrival I was honoured with a subdeaconship and a lieutenancy. I am to-day colonel and priest. We shall give a warm reception to the King of Spain's troops. I will answer for it that they shall be excommunicated and well beaten. Providence sends you here to assist us. But is it indeed true that my dear sister Cunegonde is in the neighbourhood? with the governor of Buenos Aires? Candide assured him on oath that nothing was more true, and their tears began afresh. The baron could not refrain from embracing Candide. He called him his brother, his saviour. Ah, perhaps, said he, we shall together, my dear Candide, enter the town as conquerors and recover my sister Cunegonde. That is all I want, said Candide, for I intended to marry her, and I still hope to do so. You insolent, replied the baron, would you have the impudence to marry my sister, who has seventy-two quarterings? I find thou hast the most consummate effrontery to dare to mention so presumptuous a design. Candide, petrified at this speech, made answer, Reverend Father, all the quarterings in the world signify nothing. I rescued your sister from the arms of a Jew and of an Inquisitor. She has great obligations to me. She wishes to marry me. Master Pangloss always told me that all men are equal, and certainly I will marry her. We shall see that, thou scoundrel, said the Jesuit baron de Thunder Ten Tronc, and that instant struck him across the face with the flat of his sword. Candide in an instant drew his rapier and plunged it up to the hilt in the Jesuit's belly. But in pulling it out reeking hot, he burst into tears. "'Good God!' said he. "'I have killed my old master, my friend, my brother-in-law. I am the best-natured creature in the world, and yet I have already killed three men, and of these three two were priests.' Cacambo, who stood sentry by the door of the arbor, ran to him. We have nothing more for it than to sell our lives as dearly as we can, said his master to him. Without doubt some one will soon enter the arbor, and we must die sword in hand. Cacambo, who had been in a great many scrapes in his lifetime, did not lose his head. He took the baron's Jesuit habit, put it on Candide, gave him the square cap, and made him mount on horseback. All this was done in the twinkling of an eye. Let us gallop fast, master. Everybody will take you for a Jesuit, going to give directions to your men, and we shall have passed the frontiers before they will be able to overtake us. He flew as he spoke these words, crying out aloud in Spanish, 
Make way, make way for the Reverend Father Colonel. End of chapter 15